world of mysticism, dark romantic characters in the goth scene to me is just beautiful. Things that people say, you know, they call me a faggot or they'll say, oh, that guy's not a real cholo. Real cholos would slap the shit out of him. And it's fucking funny as fuck because I'm like one of the fucking most respected gang members in my community, you know, in my neighborhood. I don't fit in a norm, you know, I don't fit with the goth kids because I'm a cholo. So I don't fit with the cholos because I'm not a traditional cholo because I'm a goth kid. I don't really give a fuck. I'm here living my life, doing my thing, and nothing's gonna change. People do test me on the regular basis, but like I say in my song From Dog to God, I never ran when they tested me. Everything that I do from the music to my artwork, they're, they're like sigils, they're like amulets. I create these paintings and I make this music to protect me from those who wish me harm. So my music is telling people, hey, keep an arm distance because I will harm you if you wish me harm. was all I had, you know. I was listening to, you know, New Order, the Pet Shop Boys, you know, Lords of the New Church, obviously Bauhaus, you know, I love Bauhaus, Peter Murphy. Music was always what I wanted to do, but, you know, I was living in the Chicano neighborhood and we didn't have instruments and we didn't have bands. I was born in Cotija, Michoacán, 1975. My father immigrated to the United States here to San Diego, California. We came here illegally. My uncle at that time was a coyote. He brought my mother and myself across through the desert. I'm the one, you know, who is a cholo goth. I'm in a fucking gang and I'm a goth kid, you know? There's tons of cholo goths, you know? Like Mexican kids that grew up in the barrio, that grew up in gang neighborhoods and who grew up listening to, you know, electronic music to, and, you know, grew up in the goth scene or loving it or, you know, wanting to be part of it, you know, but like didn't have an identity. I mean, a lot of people send me these beautiful emails saying, thank you for giving us an identity. So I didn't even know that there was others like us out there, you know, we are pioneering the movement. When did I get jumped into Sherman Grand Hills Park? I got jumped in when I was 13 years old. And I did it for um, lots of reasons. One was to make um, life easier for my family and for myself. Because back then, if you weren't from a, from a gang, it was really hard for you to live in a neighborhood, you know, that was gang infested or gang affiliated because gangs were prominent and they were strong and they were everywhere and uh, you couldn't go to the liquor store without getting checked by gang members, you know, and it made life really easy on my family. Other gangs probably wouldn't be as supportive to a cholo goth or someone that's completely different from what people expect a gang member to be. I fought to be who I am. I fought for my individuality. You know, they want to make sure that I'm down because of the way that I dress, because of the way that I carry myself, because sometimes I want to wear lipstick. Whatever it is that I want to do, people are not going to like it. I've been stabbed, I've been shot, I've stabbed people, people have stabbed me, and I've been spit on by people just walking. You know, racism is everywhere, but you know what? I see past that. Yeah, this is the big Sherman Grand Hills Park territory with the homies from 20th Street, 20th Block, 27 Block, Southeast San Diego, Sherman Zone, Sherman Territory. Cholo Goth. Right? Cholo Goth. All the 1913 gangs. I 
appreciate being in a gang so much because there's so much respect and there's a way of doing things, you know, that's like you don't cross another man. And we're a really old, old Chicano gang from San Diego. You know, we're one of the original gangs in San Diego, California. We do SMGHP, we do 1913, which is what I have in my stomach, 19, and the alphabet is the letter S, 13, and the alphabet is the letter M, SM, our uh, initials, 2V2, that's, that's 27, or GHP. We have a lot of codes, you know, a lot of messages for those who know how to read them. It's a gang language, you know, so we know it and, and, and our enemies know it. But you know, other motherfuckers don't because it's a subculture, you know? We're an underground subculture, so we have our own language, you know? It's something you inherit. It's like the son inherits the sins of the father. So when you join a gang, you inherit all this fucking beef. Fuck Charmin, 27 block. Support him all the way, man. He's done what he's done over here for the hood, and he's got his back all the way. Solid man. representing the neighborhood. That's right. Cool. Giving mad props when he's coming up. He's doing his thing, representing. You know, he ain't forgot where he came from, so that's good. Homeboy Dave, Rafa, they doing their shit. You know, that's some, some good music, real lyricism. Shit you need to fuck with. You can't be with that fake shit like everybody else. You know, she listen to the lyrics. You know, they're captivating. That's real music, Mexican power, and best of luck for that. I used to try to make myself ugly by like shaving my eyebrows and like just, you know, just doing shit to make myself just look different. Prayers is really just a celebration of our bond, of our brotherhood. That's what it is. We're just honoring the love that we have for each other through the medium that is prayers. I'm full of hate, but he gives me love and, and, and he shows me that I am loved and that I'm cared for. Violence is part of life, man. America feeds it to our children everywhere in our music and the fucking video games. It's not going away, man. It's part of our DNA. That's what we represent. Prayers represents violence, represents vulnerability, represents pushing back. It represents breaking stereotypes. We talk about the other side of, of violence, you know, the after, the aftermath, you know, the, the side where we'll People are hurt and, and, you know, are confused and, and are heartbroken by it. We're, we talk about the heartbreak, the heartbreak behind violence.